Well, the largest single genetic study of Neanderthals has been released, focusing on a close-knit community of cave dwellers in Siberia who lived 54,000 years ago. Joining me now is Professor Bert Roberts from the University of Wollongong. He's one of the co-authors of the research. But this sounds fascinating. Tell us about the Neanderthal family that's been identified. What do we know about them from their DNA? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ash, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, it's a really uh, rare finding. We very rarely find a whole pile of Neanderthal fossils of a very similar age in a cave. Usually they're spread over a long time span, so you can't really tell whether they're part of the same group or not. But this time we had 17 individuals, all of whom were very closely together, 17 fossils. There were 13 individuals from those 17 fossils we analysed, 11 all in one cave. There was a father and a daughter, which we could match up. There are also a bunch of other what we call second degree relatives, who so might be an aunt or an uncle or a niece or a nephew. Um, and there's also uh, the father of the daughter, the daughter also had, had two, two other males in the cave who were also very closely related to him down his mother's line. So really it was a whole clan of people living in this cave, living in this cave in uh, Siberia. And it's a really unusual find. We never get this many fossils of a single snapshot in time like we have on this particular occasion. So we've been really excited by getting so much stuff out. And the fact that DNA was even preserved is remarkable because often it decays away and there's very little left after 50,000 years. So just explain for us how DNA can tell researchers like you about how people might have lived 54,000 years ago. How can you analyse those DNA samples to, to learn more about what life was like back then? There are different kinds of different a, DNA. Um, one's called mitochondrial DNA, and it comes down our mother's line. We've inherited from our mothers. But also from father to son, you get passed on Y chromosomes. And then, of course, our nuclear DNA consists of all the other kinds of DNA, which we inherit from both of our parents. And we looked at all of those different kinds of DNA in this particular study, which is also very rare. Usually people just look at mitochondrial DNA. But that allowed us to look at how much was coming down our mother's line, how much was coming down our father's line, how much we're getting from both parents. And one of the interesting things we did find among several was that there's much more diversity in the mitochondrial DNA, in other words, on the female side rather than from on the male side, which suggests that the men stayed in the cave while the females migrated to and from the cave from different communities. So it's really, really what we call a patrilocal community. The men stayed at home and the women moved around from one community to the other. But it was a very small community, maybe only 10 or 20 people. So we are on the far eastern edge of what we know that Neanderthals extended into. We know they went that far in Siberia. We don't know if they went any further. So this is really the eastern edge of the range of Neanderthals. Maybe this is a community that was on the edge of extinction, literally on the very edge of their range and also close to the time of their final extinction, which seems to have been about 40,000 years ago. And in terms of this group of people, can we tell how they died and, and how old they might have been at death? We can't. Um, many of them are adults. Like I say, we do have a child who is a teenager. There are probably many other uh, family members actually in that cave. We've only analysed about a quarter of the remains so far. So if we analyse the remaining three quarters of the ancestral remains, we might find there's many more family members, including many more younger members of the family. Why they died, that's still an open question. It could have been an incredibly cold storm that came through and wiped them out, or maybe a disease. We simply don't know at this point. But the fact that there are so many family members who went extinct at one point in time does suggest some kind of calamity uh, that unfortunately you know, knocked them all out. It itself is just a hunting camp. It's somewhere they used to set themselves up to hunt bison, horses, and it's a perfectly positioned cave, just above a river, and you can see all the local floodplains around all the rivers, so you can see all the bison herds coming in if that's what you want to hunt. So it's a perfectly situated cave to actually do hunting, but why they went extinct at the end, we really don't know at the moment. So what part of the body do, do those actual DNA fragments come from when you talk about these, these fossils? And how does that all fit in with coming up with a, a timestamp for all of this? How do we know that it was 54,000 years ago that these people we're talking about were living? Yes, the 54,000 date comes from dating the sediments in which the fossils are found. Um, we actually get very similar genetic dates from the, uh, from the fossils themselves, which consist of teeth, mostly teeth and some bones as well. So the DNA is contained in both of those. Uh, 17 pieces were analysed, uh, and they give a similar sort of age of about 60,000 years from the genetic clock, 
which is a rather more elaborate way of trying to work out the age. It's got larger uncertainties on it than dating the sediments themselves. Uh, but we couldn't say at 54,000 years whether people have lived there for 100 years or 1,000 years. But the fact that there's so many family members and some very odd little changes in the mitochondrial DNA that actually disappear after about three generations, so it really wouldn't hang around for very long. We know that really this cave was occupied for less than 100 years and probably only a few years by this single family group or an extended family group. But uh, quite why they went extinct and what they were even doing there, th th those remain unknown at the moment, apart from hunting the animals in the local valley and making stone tools which they used to hunt and cut up the meat. So, Professor, how different would our DNA, the modern human's DNA, be now in comparison? How quickly and, and how much does it change over the generations? Hardly at all. Um, there's almost no difference between Neanderthal DNA and our DNA, but there are overstretches. And in fact, all of us who live outside of Africa, say for indigenous Africans, have Neanderthal DNA in our genomes now, somewhere between about 1% and 4%, depending on where we live in the world and our ancestry. So we all carry some Neanderthal DNA with us. So we know that our ancestors sometime in the deep past did actually interbreed with Neanderthals, just like Neanderthals integrated with other kinds of humans who were around at the time. But uh, how much we each have depends on where we are, depends through time. It sort of diminishes away over time as well. So the differences between us and the animals are actually decreasing over time. As you're becoming more and more similar to the animals. And the behavior of the animals is also very similar. They had families. They made all the same stone tools. They were painting rock art. They were doing many of the same things that our ancestors were doing at the same point in time. So there's almost no difference, actually, between us and the animals now. Quite why they went extinct is another really interesting question that there's still no consensus on among scientists. It could be a whole bunch of reasons, but I think the most likely one at the moment is that we had a slight advantage in terms of the tools we were using and the way we were doing things. We had slightly larger community sizes, and maybe that gave us a slight competitive advantage, and that's all it needed over thousands of years to give us that slight competitive advantage and push Neanderthals to the end of their range and beyond it until eventually they went extinct, leaving behind just a few traces of their DNA in us today. Day. Professor Bert Roberts, wonderful to hear about your research. Really appreciate you taking the time to share it with us. Thank you. Thank you very much.